<clears throat> Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome to part 5 of my New England campaign here in Hearts of Iron for Kaiserreich. Uh, so today we will be covering Connecticut at the start. I'm going to kind of make this quick because it's uh, we're on episode 5 and we're still only in May of uh, uh, 1938, which I know Kaiserreich goes a little bit slower typically. Um... But, you know, we're playing a game, and I, know, I usually wouldn't have a problem with that, but we're playing a game where, you know, the idea is to get involved in the Civil War. That's been going on for a while. So, um, although, it's kind of like me, the, 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 the Civil War is going to sort of be its own climax to the series. I might try to go to, um, you know, get involved in the wars in Europe or whatever afterwards, but if nothing else, we got to create the greater United States of America again out of New England. Uh... But anyway, so, so, so let's kind of do a quick thing about Connecticut. Uh, so Connecticut is here, south of Massachusetts, west of Rhode Island, which we already covered. So the main thing that I wanted to talk about is, uh, so of course Connecticut was one of the early um, colonies. Um, but uh, the two things that I thought were really interesting about it is... Um, well, they, they, they're, like some of the other neighbors to Massachusetts, they were a bit of a break-off colony... Um, and, uh, they, they mostly were, it actually was kind of like a series of colonies and there was like all these land deals that were going on where they were buying different chunks of it. And, uh, you know, there were land disputes. So for example, I think that, um, Connecticut had an original claim to Long Island, which would, uh, that would be pretty interesting. Cause can you imagine if like, cause, cause yeah, imagine if New York city was in, Connecticut, so then, you know, New York would have to establish an identity outside of the city. Boom! Suck on that, Albany and Buffalo. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about you in a future episode. Uh, anyway, so they created, which was what well, was a, some historians, but it's apparently very disputed, have claimed is the first ever um, written constitution in the Western world. Because remember the. Uh, like the 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 British Constitution is not written down somewhere, and so this Constitution was called the uh, Fundamental Orders. Uh, so the Fundamental Orders went into effect in um, I think it was in the 1630s, um, and it was just like uh, they said, this is how we're going to govern our area, and it um, it it had you know, rights and laws, like, here's how we are here. Oh, why am I clicking New Hampshire and you have Connecticut? But there were various rights and laws, including, okay, we're going to have magistrates. This is how you um, elect the magistrates. Here, Here's how you uh, uh, determine who's eligible to vote. This is the, the powers that the government has. And um, apparently when uh, England found out about this, they were okay with it. Um, they were still given a royal charter so they could be their own, uh, colony. Uh, and they were just allowed to self-govern. Uh, they still joined the revolution eventually. Uh, so that was the first thing that I wanted to talk about. But also, the other really important thing about Connecticut is, um, their arms dealing. Very important, especially during the U.S. Civil War. So, this is where, oh, I thought Remington was here. Okay, well, that's awkward. I thought, I thought for sure Remington... I was going to show it as an example. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of um, arms manufacturers that exist, existed and continue to exist in um, Connecticut, including uh, Remington, as I was saying. Uh, but it was, it was a really disproportionately industrialized city. Uh, so, for example, there was the New Haven Railroad Company... Um, which I think J.P. Morgan ended up getting control of at some point. Uh, and uh, at one point, they were in control of 2,000 miles of railway. Now, that did extend outside of Connecticut, but for scale, all of Connecticut's land mass doesn't even equal 5,000 miles, uh, square miles. So to have 2,000 miles of track being owned by something out of Connecticut is obviously... Uh, pretty damn powerful. Um, oh, but Winchester is here. Yeah, I thought, where is Remington? I could have sworn Remington was a... But yeah, Remington is one of the major arms manufacturers that exists there. And then there's Winchester Rifles, of course, and uh, Colt. So yeah, Winchester, Remington, and Colt are all Connecticut-based um, arms manufacturers. So that's what's going to get us to 
to to the west coast once we intervene in this war. All right, got it down to five minutes. Feeling a little happier about that. Uh, let's con carry on now, shall we? Get these recon companies. Hidden agent reveals a safe house location. Goodness gracious, I simply do not understand how this stuff works. Instantly canceled if it's over. Like, how are we supposed to expand? How are we supposed to get any of this stuff to work? It's like hardly getting us anything anyway. Bah! Oh, Equan Revolt is broken out. Hmm. Yeah, we know how that's going to turn out. Uh, what is going on in the rest of the world? Syndicalism is spreading to Burma. Okay. Uh, syndicalism looking pretty strong in Spain right now. I think they're about to take Madrid or they're very well. No, they already did. Yeah, okay. So Carlos Spain is kind of making a comeback here, but I think the CNT is in the driver's seat right now. Uh, there goes Mittel Africa. Nice knowing you. See you, chump. Yeah, all the war. All the war. <laughs> South Africa looks so huge because I've, I've gotten so you uh, I've, I've played so much the new order that I think of it as being smaller naturally we all know that Kaiserreich is the actual nas natural state of things okay we got some more uh, stuff open here we can get some infrastructure in Rhode Island infrastructure infrastructure hearing trails uh, this stuff is particularly great uh, whatever yeah just go for the expensive ones first Kashira Portugal join and Insulindia is doing its national revolt. This would be an interesting country to play sometime. I've seen some crazy screenshots. Like like the the recruitable population you can get is insane. So like I've seen screenshots where people own and, and they I'm figuring they must be cheating, giving themselves extra stability or something if they're managing to actually core it. But like they've they're 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 like They've taken the east coast of Asia and they're in North Africa, excuse me, North America and stuff. All right, we're getting, uh, let's go for the arms investment. Get that extra military factory. Batavia fell. All right, so we're up to 28 factories, continuing the road to, um, let's get these better rifles. Uh, continuing the road to, uh, 30 something whatever we need so we can declare independence uh what we're we gonna do after the federal housing act yeah it's got to be welfare for work we don't have a choice but it's fine yeah it's gonna be good for us uh, that political power gain which i'm already not using all of all right a roof for every head a housing program for fellow african-american workers okay Let's provide a roof for every head. Okay, welfare for work. Uh, now, what are we gonna do about reluctance to civil war? I guess we have to make our way to the victory gardens. <clears throat> Plus that consumer good factory modification could be good for us. Can we do this without being independent? Oh, I think we can. Okay, okay, so we're gonna do Lexington, victory, then Southern Fire. I could come over here and do some of this stuff, but I don't think I really need to. Logistics fulfillment. Oh, we don't have any trains. Uh, let's just do the decision for that for now. I'll take a little stability hit, but I got plenty of that. Yeah, 15 units of train will be added. Yeah. That'll, that'll get us through there. Uh, 4th of July, still hurting. Okay, definitely not going to do the war. Well, war propaganda. But yeah, we can't until tension gets a little higher anyway. Might not be bad to have. Uh, I think MacArthur is about to drop. Yeah, it's too much pressure. Um, the American Union state is losing. They've been pushed back onto the west side of the Mississippi. Oi! Baratia troops are currently massing. A great deal of reconnaissance is taking place on the British Indian border. The Baratia commune is planning an invasion. We must get ready. Do I want to go? Do I want to send troops over there to die? I've got some to spare, <laughs> but uh, we probably will not. Although having a united India is always great. Um, 
Yeah, uh, but yeah, they could become such an enormous manpower reserve. But on the other hand, once the Federalists fall, I think the CSA is going to be able to start really pushing south. Like, look, they've already entered Tennessee, and like I said they they've secured Illinois. So we don't know when Canada might get us involved. Oh, we can get another division up. You know what? We don't even have guns. Our, our units won't do any good over there in India anyway. It's irrelevant. The only thing we'd be sending them over there to do is die. Mm. <sighs> See, army experience still coming in steadily, which is nice. Yeah, getting that half a point a day just off the special forces of the Republic. Unlocks, infiltrate, improvise, sabotage, resistance, actions, and state control by our enemies in the Second American Civil War. And we'll automatically get logistics. That's cool. Uh, Albany becomes a metropolis, and we'll get two victory points. Oh, right, 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 right. The uh, the research slot. Although I've already got so much. I don't really... I'm already, yeah, like, I'm already doing stuff really ahead of time. I think that could wait. Let's uh, deal with this reluctance. Remember Lexington and Concord. Okay. Um, let's come over here. We're construction three. Switch that out. Okay. Can't do any of these right now. Yeah, just uh, too too much, too many civilian factories being used. Oh, Hyderabad's going after Madras right now. So then it. No, they're doing social conservative. Okay, they're not doing the empire round, so there won't be an intervention. Hmm. <clears throat> Where's the mini map? Yeah. Come on, allies, go over here. Go over there, please. Prepare for battle. Uh, okay, so it's going to take us about a year, it was saying, until we have the infantry equipment that's necessary. We appear to not be making any uh, support equipment, probably because I don't have the aluminum. Mm. Yeah, we don't have it, so reduce speed of nothing. Shit. Ugh. Great Depression, at least we're down to just 21%. All right, Middle East is gonna start blowing up here. Oh, nice, this will, Victory Gardens will remove reluctant population, so that's gonna actually increase uh, that. Oh, no, 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 it's not, no, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, so reluctant populace will be gone. Victory Gardens. Without the Great Plains bread basket, our nation will find itself struggling to feed both the civilian population and the military. We'll encourage the civilian front to, uh, uh, grow their vegetables, meatless Mondays, civilians will enjoy eating the fruits of labor, our military will appreciate the money that can be spent in order to aid the war effort. Okay. Stretching 8.5 miles, the industrial marvel connecting the borders of New England and Canada has finally finished construction, connecting the, co connecting the state of uh, New York to Ontario, which uh, I guess that means it's here? Yeah, I guess it's like in this area. Uh, on this day, President Joseph Martin Jr. officially dedicated the bridge uh, to New England, declaring it marked a period of continued friendship and camaraderie between the Canadians and their northern neighbors. With his blessing and dedication, the bridge will soon open, much to the cheers of Canadian American onlookers. Uh, refugees from New York City, they built it, designed spans to fit a regional topography, beautiful bridges with artistic grace and attention to detail. First civilian and military vehicles across the bridge. First of many as the bridge serves as indestructible physical bomb between Canadian and American people. Huzzah! Oh, no no buff off that. Not like a little infrastructure boost somewhere, huh? Nothing? Fine. Piss off. Oh, what's this? Oh, uh, yeah, complete the Mare Park Railway Parkway, or we can do Bear Brook Camp. That's going to open up other things. Reservoir. Provide upwards of 10 days emergency to apply at any time for water. Um, 
greater volume of motor traffic safely and efficiently. Let's do that one. Yeah, just trying to be rid of this. Okay, so we need to get to more than 32 factories. So once we hit at least 30 factories, let's, uh, I think that's when we'll detour over here and do the industrial era because that's going to give me two straight up factories. And then it'll also put us in a position to grab the research slot when we're ready for it. Here we go. War begins in India. Oh, nice. Get that new land doctrine. Thank you. Um... Yeah, what we're building here doesn't really matter because I'm using it up here. We have one factory open, I think, and all these require two. Yes, yeah, so we don't have. Damn, this the Lackawanna Steelworks need four civilian factories. Damn. Okay, do we dare do the war propaganda? No, it's too expensive. Um. I could get Du Bois now. Man of the people. No, I could wait. Let's get, uh... <sighs> the nuclear is good in the long term. But I think in the long term we'll have enough power that we don't really need it anymore. Hmm... Mando Doctrine. Ooh, Wesley Grinder Jr. will give me daily army experience. More than the other two. Division Attack or Gloss was fit. Actually, I think Groves will be better for the straight up. Oh no, less supply consumption. Yeah, let's go with Clark. Clark's good. And yeah, we're just boosting that daily experience gain nicely. What do we want to research next? Mm, oh, only 100 days on the Santee Air. All right, preparations for war. When the Great Civil War broke out, the government of New England hold on, found itself divided regarding pop preparation, excuse me, participation in the war. With the popularity of isolationist groups such as America First, Many New Englanders hoped to wait out the war that threatened to consume the New World. As the Great Depression persisted, the economy of New England struggled immensely, and it was not until the Second Square Deal under President, uh, oh, it's Martin, that the economy of New England began to show signs of recovery and growth. With its economy on the road to total recovery, the factories once producing shoes and cars, now producing trucks and uniforms. Uh, we're seeing the conflict for what it is, a battle for the true America. New England cannot sit away from the war idly. We need to reclaim the country from those who drove it into chaos. Air raid drills are being practiced daily across the schools in New England, and young men and women flock to recruitment centers eager to serve their country in its hour of need. Like our ancestors in 1776, we will not be intimidated by the odds, as the tree of liberty will not fall to the reactionaries and revolutionaries that seek to defile it. We cannot leave America in darkness. All right. So Canada wants me to help with the Indian War. Sorry, I'm a little busy right now. But we could do Southern Fire. That's going to help with legitimacy. But you know what? Actually, is there any particular reason I knew this? So that's going to convert factories. This is going to give me civilian factories. Uh, I think we need the factories. Let's, let's come over here and take this now, actually. Okay, what's this? War participation starting to go up a little bit. What is this? Increase foreign representation in R and D. Where is that? Oh, this. No. Uh. Can't create an agency. I don't really need one. 
Okay, what's next? That's 233 days. Got hit with a hurricane. Oh my gosh, look at all that damage. Oh no, it's, there's a chance it'll be one of the other of them, but very bad. Very not good. Netherlands have nationalized German assets. I wonder how the Germans are going to feel about that. Oh, Kingdom of Spain might be making a comeback again. Oh, uh, Argentinian free territory has been created. The new age for socialism. They went radical. So I think that means they can join the, the international... Or I mean, I'm trying to remember if that means they're locked into doing that. Socialist Party moder moderates. Okay, they went this way. So they could do revolutionary democracy or restore the suspended constitution. Congress debates child workers. Uh, young workers were hired for various tasks. Textile mi mills that categorize much of New England. Finding children in the factories stuff and uncommon. Their small stature makes it easy to handle machinery, navigate tight spaces. But there's controversy. There's been a National Child Labor Committee. And they're responding to it. Uh, with... Uh, with New England's industry beginning to recover, Congress has now brought the issue of child labor to its latest debate. While some argue that children are needed to help struggling families and help New England's industry compete with the rest of the American continent, many believe the practice of child labor is inhumane. Instead, they have pushed Congress to provide compulsory universal education laws nationwide following the age-old New England tradition of education. Doing so would significantly enhance our research and intellectual capacity as we create a new generation of scientists and researchers. Those would cost fewer hands in the factory. So we can keep them at work, which hurts stability but helps with production efficiency. Or we could restrict them during the school day, which gives me a 3% research speed bonus. I think we want that. God, my research has got to be getting out of control by now. Yeah, we're at 25% and counting on that. Uh, let's also get saving up so we can uh, now switch over to early mobilization and just start making our way down here. Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be coming at everybody with like freaking laser weapons by the time we intervene. But we're gonna need it. We're gonna need the quality equipment and troops. Dun, 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 dun. How's that Great Depression looking down to 19%? Ugh. I could take that one thing, the focus that's going to give me 50 political power. Which one was it? Yeah, financial institutions. And that'll give me two civilian factories, which is also good for getting independence. Okay, wage reform. Agitation of labor is leading to the rise of syndicalism. Uh, okay, wage and labor standards have been brought to the table. Proposed new law aims to amend the labor agitation in the country while also keeping the populace far from the allure of syndicalism. Supported by individuals in the Bureau of Labor Standards and Congresswoman Mary T. Norton, the proposal plans to formally adopt an eight-hour workday, a 40-hour work week, and wages for and a wage for overtime hours. The act declares that workers must be paid a minimum wage and that the overtime wage must be one and a half times what the worker would usually be paid. The act also aims to cover younger workers and declares that workers under 18 are exempt from specific dangerous jobs. Critics of the proposed law argue that it is nothing more than syndicalism in sheep's clothing and that the law dramatically strengthens workers and unions who may use the act as motivation to demand more. On the other hand, proponents of the law are confident the passage of such protection will guarantee worker loyalty, ensuring the issue of labor rights is dealt with for the time being. Third age wages, that's stability. We get more stability, we lose production growth, or we could reject the syndicalism, hurts production efficiency retention, or helps with the cap. Um, I think we've already got plenty of uh, stability. Oh yeah, which one is which? <laughs> okay, so fair age wages helps with stability, but hurts growth. This makes retention go down, but the cap gets higher. So the cap going higher is good as long as I stay on it. Oh, no, you know what? No, then we, we know this is actually a bad call because we're researching quickly. So we're going to be getting equipment on average faster. So we don't want to be losing retention because then we lose that retention when we switch, which will be frequently. 
because uh, yeah, we're at twenty five percent bonus on our research already. So let's uh, fair days wages instead. We'll take the increased ability. It doesn't hurt. Uh, okay. Neither of those options was good, really. Both kind of sucked. Oh, that's great. One of my simply factories is hurt. That's fucking terrific. All right, let's do this financial institution thing, which should get us to where we can declare independence. Perfect for the Connecticut quintuplicate. Yeah, I chose that title for the video because it rhymed. And also, it's the fifth video. You know, it's, every video starts with talking about state history and whatnot. Basilicas of St. Peter and Paul. Uh, an influx of French Canadians, Catholic immigrants, Dominican fathers are taking over administration of a church. The beginning of the parish, delays on the project. The church got dedicated. This reaffirms New England's traditional values of piety and religious freedom and reflects the growing ties of the French Canadians to their adoptive country. Look forward to seeing you this Sunday. Because that's what French people sound like, eh? French Canadians, eh? He's still just at 19%. Digging out, digging out. Nope, news from China. Yiling Guangclick is victorious. Uh, let's see. I think the Qing government's got this under control here. I think they're going to be all right. Because the Hunan and Sichuan click. Right, but we're trying to get to that 100 political power so we can change the mobilization. And yes, yes, I know. I've been taking stuff for the, in the decisions that cost political power. But I need to do that to get rid of the Great Depression in the long term. So that's all i got to say about that. MacArthur hanging in there, actually pushing it back away from Washington. Oh, no, they're coming in from the West again. But they, again, this is good. This is good. Uh, the CSA is definitely winning. It's a grind, but they're winning. Like, they've taken almost all of Tennessee. They've entered North Carolina. They just entered Georgia. They've taken the northern uh, third of Missouri. They're going to take St. Louis. Uh, yeah, they're, they're doing really good right now. Not really, really good. But it's like they're, they're doing quite well. Uh, they're even pushing here in the west, which is surprising. I kind of thought this would just turn into an ugly stalemate. Oh, the Chinger's screwed now. Here comes Feng Tian. Uh, yeah, they're against all of them, but the Ching, like the league's kind of just doing its own thing. Uh, the G G G oh, yeah, but they're part of the Chinger clique. Oh, I must have missed them joining. Let's see enemies. Yeah, I can't. I can't right now. Um, old England. Old England, New Canada, present Canada. Yeah, oh wow, yeah, Kingdom of Spain, they've taken Madrid back. Wow, who's helping them? Len Lease from Germany. The two Sicilies in Austria are helping Carlos Spain, and the CNTs, of course, getting help from all the all the third international people. Yeah, freaking Eastern Front of the Third International. Interesting. So they're they're considered to be two different uh, factions. I don't think I've seen that before. I guess so. That's like you can't just defeat one to make them both capitulate. But let's go. This is how we're gonna end today's episode. Second Declaration of Independence. The New England Provisional Government was created by Canada. It's true. But we are established enough now that it's time we stood on our own feet, unless the Canadian reason for intervention is not what they suggested, and they have more nefarious aims. But we can also finally go to the early mobilization. Um, fortunately, we don't have war support right now. Okay, first things first, though, let's get some... Um, we gotta get some aluminum going so we can actually be building uh, support equipment. There we go, there we go. Oi, my focus got canceled. Why? Oh, I lost a factory. Shit. Okay, we need a little more. Um, steel mills. Oh, it's because I traded the factory away. 
Fuck me. Okay, that, that's the problem. Okay, let's try this again, shall we? At least we didn't really lose the days because they stay queued up. Uh, Alright, clear some New Hampshire forests. And we could do the main fire trails. So It's going good. 17%. Yeah, so the, we'll declare our independence, and that is where we'll call it today, anyway. It's completed rural electrification. We need to do that before we can do the dam. We don't have buffalo. So we got to do the dam so we can do this last one. So I guess we'll, we'll come over here and grab this real quick. Okay, that artillery is actually not too shabby. Quickly, we can get it up. Ooh, that beeping hurt my ears. I don't know about y'all, but that did not feel good. Okay, Hudod's down. Oh, Xerography Breakthrough. Uh, photocopying. Story's a remarkable one. It reflects the truth of the American dream. He worked various odd jobs. Uh, he attended the California Institute of Technology. Carlson found himself out of work and out of money, so he studied law. Amid the chaos that engulfed the American nation, spending long nights at the New York Public Library, he grew tired of copying law books by hand due to his inability to f afford them. I very nearly did that with um, some pages from a book um, recently, and then I heard, oh, I could just take, take pictures. <laughs> the seemingly endless task led him to read an article in an obscure German scientific journal from Pi Sele regarding the nature of copying machines. He conducted experiment after experiment in his tiny apartment, often smoky and smelly and sometimes even explosive. Develop Despite developing arthritis of the spine, Carlson persisted, working with an Austrian immigrant, Otto Corne. Finally, on October 22nd, 1938, the men achieved their breakthrough. Cornell wrote, 10-22-38, Astoria, and in ink on a slide, which then had an electrical current generated and then transferred onto wax paper. In the hands of the two men was the first uh, zero, zero graphic copy. Uh, while Carlson all has already filed for a patent, it remains unknown whether or not businesses will approach Carlson for his invention. The Army Signal Corps has already expressed great interest in dry copies for, uh, produced alternately, the, alternatively than the traditional photographic techniques. But will the army buy it? Will the army buy a Xerox machine? Stay tuned. This underground railroad is useless. Oi, where did my factory go? Ah! Fine. You know what? We're going to end the episode there. Screw you. Um, okay, what's the more dam going to give me? The more damn will give me a factory. Okay, there. So I'll have some fucking wiggle room. So let's do this. 90% uh, of rural America was without access to electricity at the tail end of the Hoover administration, particularly affected with the northern states of Vermont and New Hampshire. We need to ensure all citizens have access to it. So we're going to do that. Okay, that's it for the day. I'm Conquering History Games. Thank you very much for joining me. And I will see you in the next episode, in which we will declare independence. So we might take a break from the state thing for a minute. So I could bring that up in the title. Uh, I'll see you then.